So I've had four babies, but only three of them are mine. Just a warning. I definitely did not get to have one of those like dream journeys. Um, even though I have accepted that I'm not able to be a surrogate again, it's still kind of sad to look back on it and realize that what happened happened, but overall I wouldn't trade it for anything. I still wish I could have done one more. Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. My name is Sarah. I like to do lifestyle vlogs, but today I had a little something different just because I still want to share a little bit about myself. And one of the things that I wanted to share was my journey with surrogacy. It was something that when I was pregnant with my daughter, I just knew I wanted to do. I love pregnancy. I know I'm crazy. <laughs> I get that all the time. They're like, what? You enjoy it? But I did. I loved it so much. It was one of the times that I was like the happiest with my body, just watching it grow and all of the things that it can do is just, I think pregnancy is an amazing process. Call me crazy, <laughs> but I loved it. And I thought it would be so amazing to be able to go through one more pregnancy before I knew it's done for me. I can't do it anymore. Like, you know, I can't just keep having kids for the rest of my life. <laughs> but I thought, how amazing would it be to help somebody else while also getting to enjoy pregnancy? And no baby for me. <laughs> I can only handle the three that I have. So I just wanted to tell about my story, uh, a little bit about the process, and just some frequently asked questions. So like I said, my story begins with when I was pregnant, uh, I just knew. I knew that I didn't want this to be my last pregnancy, but I knew that it had to be our last child. And that's when I kind of started looking into surrogacy. I never like took any steps. I, I just remember telling my mother-in-law and my husband while we were out having Starbucks, I told them, I'm not ready to be done being pregnant. Maybe I'll be a surrogate. And the laughs that I got, my mother-in-law was like, you will not be able to let go of that baby. You're gonna love that baby too much. And that that's just crazy. And my husband was just kind of, kind of like, um, okay. <laughs> didn't think anything more of it so fast forward like it was about three years later um it was around christmas time my husband went out to get our oil changed on our car and i had already been thinking about it again and just like getting that urge that like i wanted to experience pregnancy one more time and, like my daughter was already three years old and I knew that it was like kind of like a now or never kind of situation so it was funny he went out to get the oil changed and he always recalls this moment that I called him and told him hey I just put in some applications to become a surrogate <laughs> and it all just like took off from there that's how I am with like so many things I'll just like have it in my mind and then I'll just be like hey, I'm gonna do this, or hey, I wanna do this. And he's the most supportive, amazing person. Like, he's always ready to just jump on board and support me. So after that, uh, within like the next, I'd say like week or two, I had a lot of agencies contacting me back. Um, some kind of were very off-putting. Um, just in the way that they like approached me it almost kind of felt like very like business-like and i don't know I, I i just kind of expected something different so those agencies that had contacted me back i politely declined and said um never mind i i guess this isn't something that i'm wanting to move forward with i did have one agency i, I think she was called a coordinator uh she called me and she just had this bright, bubbly, loving energy about her that like she would just ask my name and like just what led me into wanting to become a surrogate and just the sweetest person that I, I had ever like just randomly gotten a call from. I, I just immediately felt a connection with her uh, Julie was her name. She was the sweetest and I'm so grateful that she was the one to contact me. But Julie set up a meeting with the owners of the agency that I went through. 
and she said that they that's the process they like to do they like to get to know their surrogates a little bit so i just thought that was amazing and i just waited for that meeting to to happen and I, I remember that meeting like vividly as well i got to meet them both and they were both the sweetest women they were super supportive asked a little about me a little about my family what led me into this decision and what i'm hoping to get from my journey for me going into my journey all i wanted was to experience pregnancy again <laughs> for my last time like i i knew that it was just gonna be this one time and it, it was gonna be like it for me i didn't think that i would be like a two-time surrogate or or anything like that and my hopes for my journey were just to enjoy that and i told them that i had no preference on a couple i had no preference on a state or anything like that i had like no preferences i i just wanted to help somebody and i wanted to get to be pregnant again so for me the process from filling out my application sending everything in getting my OBGYN clearance I'd say that that took about a month and then within that month we were also moving forward with the matching process and I the first file that got sent to me was a very sweet seeming couple like because you only get to read a, a profile on them and then you kind of like gauge like whether or not like you vibe with them or like this is the couple that you would want to meet and potentially move forward with because after you make that call on whether or not you would like to set up a match meeting that could potentially be your what it's called is ips intended parents so with that profile i immediately was like yeah like let's set it up let's let, let me meet them and i was super 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 excited like butterflies in my stomach like just oh my gosh what's gonna happen and it was it was so funny we all just kind of clicked immediately um it was great before we could even get off the call they were like so are we matched are we matched and and the the agency owner she she looked over at, at me and was like is that okay with you how, how are you feeling we don't usually match on the call and i was like yes of course like i love it let's move forward so from there we were matched we then just waited for my cycle to start and then came medical clearance so medical clearance for me is a funny story so we waited for my cycle to start started we got flown to california and everything went great except for i think that that month i hadn't ovulated so they needed to get a little bit more information after i went home but mind you this was back in 2020 march of 2020 so if anybody remembers the good old lockdown of 2020 march right after getting back from california the united states shut down so i kind of sat there at a standstill not knowing like was i cleared or not no clinics were doing anything couldn't move forward so it took a good eight months before i was finally medically cleared and that's a totally like crazy situation that happened to me in that time that kind of really drug out that process because i don't think it normally takes that long i think most people get medically cleared within a month <laughs> so that was a long process but we finally got medically cleared in november and then i started injections and then in december was the transfer so we flew back to California because that's where my IPs had their embryo and we had the transfer done and then seven days later I took my first pregnancy test and it was positive so it was super exciting right after taking the pregnancy test you have to go and have a beta HCG done they test your levels to make sure that the embryo is growing and it's thriving and then after they get those hcg levels back 
and they know that everything's doing good, everything is developing correctly, then you get scheduled for your first ultrasound appointment. And in that ultrasound appointment, we saw the little heartbeat. But unfortunately in my journey, that is where things kind of went a little downhill. My IPs were from China and they had a translator, but they did speak English. In the beginning, I thought that we were kind of all on the same page. My hopes for this journey were just to share in the joy of pregnancy. I looked forward to updating the mom and the dad, especially the mom. I just wanted to share everything with her, any pictures that I got, any little recordings that I got, everything. I just wanted to share it with her because I know how important that was when I was pregnant with my kids. But unfortunately, in my journey, my IPs, and I don't want to sound like mean in this, but it's still kind of like hard to talk about, but they kind of just like ghosted me. <laughs> and that was just kind of hard because going into it, I just wanted to share the joy of pregnancy and just be excited for this little human that was growing in my belly and I don't know it kind of like made me scared it made me worried that these parents were not invested and I was bringing this little human into the world and there were there's nothing I could do anymore like it was a little scary but I was incredibly lucky with my agency. In all reality, your agency is just there to match you with intended parents and get the process going. And then from there on, you're matched with your IPs. They just make sure that like all of the financial stuff is handled, like all of the insurance and all of that stuff. They aren't really required to like do anything more than that after I had talked to Julie, the coordinator, who actually didn't work with the agency anymore. She just was always so loving and sweet and she she always kind of left the door open if I needed anything, even though she didn't work there anymore. She had gotten a promotion in her field, which was amazing and I was so excited for her, but I still went to her for like anything that was happening, even though she didn't work there anymore. I just feel like I got really lucky with the agency that I went with because the owners actually reached out to me and asked me what was happening, what was what's going on, and I told them that I hadn't heard from my IPs in forever. Like nobody talks, nobody asks questions. Like I've reached out a couple times and I don't want to be like overbearing or overwhelming and being like, hey, 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 you know, so I didn't feel comfortable reaching out to them anymore, um, but nobody was talking to me or curious about their baby. I don't know. I was just worried and I kind of felt alone, even though my husband, he's amazing and he's supportive. I just, I was scared and they reached out to me and they actually contacted my IPs and let them know that there needed to be some kind of communication even if it was just once a month we need to communicate we need to check in with each other because it's important it's a it's a huge journey the whole thing like being ghosted definitely made me feel kind of like it was a transaction and that's never what i signed up for and that's that's not a good reason. I would never recommend going into a surrogacy journey for that reason. It's not worth it. I'm here to tell you, it's not worth it. The money is not worth it because that's what ended up basically happening to me was I was alone in it. There was no like excitement other than my own and my mother-in-law and my husband and my kids. We were all just crazy excited for this little human growing in my belly, but 
like it wasn't our baby. <laughs> and then after my agency reached out to my IPs and reinitiated contact, um, they did follow through. They checked in once a month and I did everything that they asked. Fast forward to the end of my pregnancy. I think it was a couple of weeks before I went into labor, I found out that they were not coming to the birth. This part was not their fault. The United States was not letting anyone from China into the United States at that time. I ended up going into labor early at 36 weeks, which for me has been so weird looking back on it still because with all three of my babies, I went to 39 weeks or past to about 42 weeks. So that was not their fault. That was not their choosing, but it still came as like a hit because the other part of my journey, since I didn't get to share in the joy of pregnancy, I really wanted to be the one to hand them their baby. I had a placental abruption. Baby was okay. Nothing wrong with him. He did spend the first couple days in NICU, and that is actually where I got to meet him and say goodbye was in the NICU and I did get to have a picture and I felt so very lucky that I got to have that moment with him and say goodbye and it was it was beautiful I loved it the person that they had sent to pick him up and travel with him back to China she actually stopped at my house and she let me say goodbye to him again and I was so grateful because then my babies got to meet him because like they, they were with me the whole journey. They saw my belly grow and it was amazing that they also got to have their little bit of closure and say goodbye. Looking back on my journey, it was definitely, I don't want to say a letdown because I still, I cherish my journey. It, it gave me a whole different perspective for women, for families that are not able to have their own babies and the struggle that they go through and the fear and the constant heartbreak. So I feel like it taught me a lot and I feel like it grew my heart even more. For those reasons, it, it's still, I'm so grateful for this journey, but it also led me to want to do another journey because I just couldn't accept that that was my journey. I dreamt of this journey in my head of, I don't know, kind of like journeys that I see other girls go through when I look up surrogacy videos or hear about other girls from my group chat through my agency. I just experienced something crazy different. So I really wanted to try again. And unfortunately, I am no longer qualified to be a surrogate because of going into labor prematurely and I had a placental abruption during labor. For me, that was another like hard blow because I did, I did think that I was going to do it again because I didn't get to experience what I had hoped for. And it's taken me a couple years to kind of be okay with that and accept my journey and the beauty that it brought and now I kind of just want to share information and if you have any questions or are worried about something or don't know what to think of to put into your legal contracts I will have my email in the description box down below and I want to keep that door open for anybody interested in surrogacy or have any questions or if you're curious about the agency that I went through, just email me. I am more than happy to be what Julie was for me, for you. Even if you're already in a journey and you have a question or anything like that, do not hesitate to send me an email. I will respond. I just never want a surrogate to feel the way that I felt during my journey. And I feel like I was so lucky to have the owners reach out to me 
And to have Julie there, I was incredibly lucky. I wanna make sure that every surrogate that needs that support has that support because what you're doing is amazing. It's such a gift. And I had to be told that so many times throughout my pregnancy because I felt like scared and worried that like, did I make a mistake? It, it was it was scary. And I don't want any surrogate to ever feel that way because what you are doing, whether or not the parents are responsive or want to have anything to do with you, what you're doing is so amazing. It's such a gift. And I don't ever want a surrogate to ever feel like they're not doing something amazing. It's such a selfless thing. You are literally giving up your body, not only for the pregnancy, but you go in for the medical evaluation. You have to take injections. You have to go through the pregnancy. You have to go through dealing with the recovery and healing from growing a baby and go then going through delivery. It's a lot. And you're amazing. So I just wanted to go over some of the frequently asked questions. If you're interested in surrogacy or thinking about signing up for it, do not rush into it. Take your time, think about it, get all the facts, go to multiple agencies, get your feel for them. And just like know in your heart that you're confident this is the one you want to go with because if I personally had went with any other agency, I don't feel like I would have gotten that support that I ended up really needing in the middle of my journey. Okay, to start out, one of the most frequently asked questions that I've seen is how long does the process take from signing up to giving birth? So this can vary widely. Like you heard in my story, Mine ended up being almost 22 months, but usually in normal scenarios, it'll take anywhere from 12 to 18 months. So the first thing that you're gonna do when signing up is you will go to whatever agency that you're interested in. You'll fill out all of your information and they will request all of your medical records from any births that you have had. From there, they typically evaluate your medical records and decide whether or not you're a good candidate for surrogacy. Some major disqualifiers are, like me, giving birth too early, premature birth. But they can vary, so it's best to just sign up, send out your medical records, and they'll let you know. And yes, if you've had your tubes tied, you can still be a surrogate you are gonna to have to go through a background check. And the background includes you and your partner if you have one. Then you're gonna go through a psych evaluation. Just make sure that you're mentally stable to go through a pregnancy. Then being matched and your medical evaluation. Once you're medically cleared, that's when the fun stuff happens and you move on to legal, drop the contracts with your IPs before you get to start your injections. After you start the injections, then you're gonna be scheduled for your transfer. <laughs> and if the transfer was successful, then you and your IPs get to wait for the delivery day. So another frequently asked question is the compensation. So this varies between every agency and then their range within every agency also varies, but it's pretty typically between 35,000 to 85,000. And those numbers vary depending on if you're a first time surrogate or if you're a repeat surrogate. Repeat surrogates and surrogates that live in California typically make more. And depending on what agency you go with, you'll get a sign-on bonus, but I don't think that every agency does that. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but some do. And that range is typically just the base package you also receive other payments throughout the journey. And this includes your monthly allowance, which typically pays for any vitamins that you need to take, if you need to mail things and stuff like that. They also, which I think is so awesome, give you access to a therapist throughout your journey too. And in my journey, I definitely took advantage of that. I think it was amazing because the therapist that they use, she's so sweet. Uh, I let her know that like when I went to say goodbye to my Cyril babe, that I was afraid to like cry because I was like, I don't want them thinking that I'm like connected to this baby and I want to like keep this baby. And 
anything like that but I was like afraid to cry because I didn't want to like be weird about it and she was just the sweetest and told me like no you just grew that baby yes you are there's gonna be some emotional connection and as you say goodbye and like it's totally normal now wanting to keep the baby is not <laughs> but he he was my womb mate for nine months so I had to say goodbye to my little buddy I mean we shared a body <laughs> But of course, if I missed anything, or if you have any questions, like I said, I will have my email in the description box down below. Okay, so I know that was a long one, and I'm so sorry for the light going in and out. It's like the weirdest day today. Like one minute Bob wants to be out shining his beautiful face, and then the next minute it's just like about to rain. It's insane. But thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in my next one. <laughs> Bye.